This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening, everyone. The parents of a penguin woman who went missing near Baker's Beach a year ago are making an impassioned plea for new information. The case is one of five being focused on by police as part of Missing Persons Week as detectives try to solve some of the state's long-running mysteries. It was a disappearance which mobilised a mass community search. 53-year-old Angela Jeffrey was last seen at her home in Penguin on the 1st of June last year. She had ventured into forest near Baker's Beach. I'd been to New Zealand, had a wonderful three weeks away, her and her husband, and she seemed OK. And then from then she went down and on Wednesday she went missing and we had no idea that she was so low. Her vehicle and some clothing was found, but new leads have been scarce since police called off the search three weeks after she was reported missing. One year on and the ordeal is still just as fresh for her family. They are renewing calls for information and reminding people about the need to support those with mental health issues. I would just like to thank the, the community for all they've, they've done to us, for us and talked to us and and thinking of us. Well, yeah, my thoughts are if it was you know, your daughter or, or your relative, you'd do anything you could to, to get a result and, and try and bring this to uh, finalisation and uh, have someone uh, charged. Detective Acting Inspector Tony Stewart has spent the best part of this decade working on another missing persons case. Helen Munnings, who was last seen in Burnie Centrelink in July 2008. She was declared dead by the coroner in 2012, but a $50,000 reward for information remains. Anything that leads us to a, uh, a cause of death uh, or, the, or the remains of any missing person, he uh, certainly would would like that. Police are also highlighting three other cases for Missing Persons Week. Eve Askew, a 14-year-old who ran away from her Fitzgerald home in 1991 after being grounded for smoking. She has not been seen since. Craig Taylor, a nine-year-old who went missing while staying at his grandparents' Conningham shack in 1993. It's believed the boy either drowned or was abducted and Naz Waldemichel, 20 years old, last seen in North Hobart in October last year. There are more than 150 long-term missing persons in Tasmania. Detectives act on all new information they receive, no matter how long a case has been open, in the hope of providing closure for families. I mean, I know she's at peace, but we'd like to be at peace too. If you can help, please contact Crime Stoppers. Tom Johnson, Southern Cross News. A Victorian man who was allegedly kidnapped by six Tasmanians in February 2015 says he has no memory of the incident. Anthony McHale today told the Launceston Supreme Court he stopped taking drugs in May that year, but has no memory from previous months. It's alleged five men and a woman abducted him, held him at gunpoint and demanded money from him. The six accused have pleaded not guilty to all charges. The trial is expected to continue for three weeks. A damning new report into sexual assault and harassment in Australian universities has found more than half of all students fell victim last year alone. The University of Tasmania has established a new culture and wellbeing role in the wake of the startling figures. But a local student group fears it's a token response that will provide little action. It was a united show of support from the University of Tasmania following a damning report into sexual assault and harassment in Australian universities. More than half of all students that responded to the survey falling victim at least once in 2016. The results for the University of Tasmania are broadly in line with national results. 54% of students at the University of Tasmania reported being sexually harassed, the majority women. Almost 90% of sexual assault victims didn't lodge a complaint. People either feel silenced or shamed and there's this attitude of if I, you know, that 
what happened to me is just normal. It's normal to be harassed and sexually assaulted at university and it's just a part of your experience. For and Sapphire like Grant, the figures the are not surprising. Of Hearing victims speak of their encounters, she says many feel the university is not taking action against the perpetrators. We want to see tough penalties, not a $55 fine, not a $200 fine. We want to see suspensions and expulsions and we want to see the university commit to putting survivors first. In the wake of the results, the University of Tasmania has established a new culture and wellbeing leadership position. Professor Margot Lalski highlighting the role ingrained culture can have, but maintaining a zero tolerance for offenders. There are some things that are already crimes, um, even sexual harassment is illegal under the anti-discrimination legislation. So that, that is already the case. The university is vowing to implement all recommendations with a challenge to shift what's become a cultural norm for some. Trying to, to guide and, and encourage respectful behaviour but also self-respect for individuals. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. Childcare service providers are maintaining their opposition to the government's moves to lower the school starting age. They say it will lead to the closure of facilities across the state. But the government says changes are needed for the benefit of children's education. The Discovery Early Learning Centre provides childcare at Bridgewater. The managers of this facility say it's threatened by the government's push to lower the school starting age. There are plans for expansion here at Bridgewater, but changes could scuttle the project. Our service, our organisation and our community are very concerned that that development won't go ahead. Um, in fact, the service that we're in right now um, will potentially close down. Under the government's proposal, parents would be given the option of enrolling their child in kindergarten from three and a half years old. What we are proposing um, is something uh, that would be voluntary, uh, something that would increase access for families and kids who may not be able to get into the childcare system. But some childcare centres say that threatens their viability. Labor says it would use money set aside for lowering the school starting age to remove barriers for early childhood education. Some of those things might be to improve access to early childhood education by supporting families with an extra subsidy. Uh, we're not saying there's one size fits all solutions to these complex problems, which is where the government's got it so wrong. But of course, we're not going to be blind to the fact that it may have impacts for local communities and for local businesses. So we need to balance that as well. Um, and in due course uh, we'll respond and, and tell the Tasmanian public uh, the, what we think is the best way forward. A report detailing the social and economic impact of the change is still to be released. Michael Breen, Southern Cross News. An investigation has found two pilots who crash-landed a plane near Bridport last year had no defined flight plan and each thought the other was in command. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau has been looking into the July 2016 incident. It says the lack of a flight plan prevented the pilots from having sufficient fuel and reserves to ensure a safe flight. The plane suffered engine troubles and one man sustained spinal injuries when it crash-landed. Ended. The Australian Transport Safety Bureau is now reminding pilots to ensure every flight is planned for. Hobart continues to be the most affordable capital city to buy a house, with median dwelling prices sitting at $338,000. The new CoreLogic Home Value Report also shows Hobart properties bring in the nation's highest rental yield of 5.1%. The Hobart housing market's been on a pretty decent upwards trajectory, at least in the trend numbers. Largely that growth is being fuelled by very affordable housing conditions, as well as the fact that we are seeing a lot of equity now flowing out of the southern states. Dwelling prices in Hobart have risen by 6.5% in the past year. A pathway linking Burnie and Wynyard along the coast is one step closer, with the state government committing nearly $2 million to the project today. The 13-kilometre pathway will be built on a disused section of railway track, enabling more residents to safely commute to work, school or university. Yeah. I'm just uh, wondering, uh, does it lend itself any further than um, pedestrians and cyclists? because one day in the near future, I'd love to be the first one that rode a horse through here. Yeah, or a tractor. I'm, or a driver. <laughs>
The new pathway will link up to other tracks to total 25 kilometres in length overall. The date has not been set for construction. A Gagebrook home undergoing renovations has been targeted in a suspected arson attack. Fire investigators on the scene this morning took away samples for analysis. The fire broke out at around one and its cause is suspicious. This place was unoccupied, unfurnished and the power was off so it doesn't leave too much uh, any other options really. They don't start by themselves. The property was due to have new carpets put in today in preparation for advertising for a new tenant. Emergency crews shut down part of Hobart's waterfront late today after smoke was detected in the vacant floor above the office of Greens leader Cassie O'Connor. Three fire crews responded to the alert. So we've got uh, three crews in breathing apparatus uh, trying to search for the seat of the fire or, or the, uh, the cause of the smoke. Uh, it appears to be uh, up on the first floor. Police closed off Morrison Street as the incident unfolded during the busy evening traffic peak. It's now been contained. Welcome back. One of Tasmania's most celebrated artists will have a number of paintings showcased in the Hobart Rotary Club's annual art show. The artworks by Max Angus have been donated by his family following his passing earlier this it's year. It's an expose of some of the most uh, talented and wonderful artists that we have here in Tasmania. An award has also been named after Max Angus. The art show gets underway this weekend with more than 300 artworks on display and for sale at Rest Point. Students from Launceston College have had a taste of American culture with final rehearsals underway for their latest production. Set in New York, In the Heights focuses on finding home and a sense of belonging. It's just about kind of finding where you belong and I think that's a really important message that it doesn't matter where you come from, um, home is where you feel like you belong. It's just such an exciting show. Um, it's a story about family, it's a story about home and I think that's just really relevant here. The show opens tomorrow night at the Princess Theatre. Tasmania now has the capacity to stream thousands of high-definition videos simultaneously without buffering as part of a major Telstra upgrade. A new transmission network is increasing capacity as more Tasmanians take advantage of evolving technologies. For those who like to stream high-definition videos, buffering like this can be frustrating. But in a new national transmission rollout, Telstra says it can be a thing of the past. The upgrade is going to reduce latency, meaning that consumers will have less buffering. So whenever they need content, whenever they demand video, they'll be able to receive it straight away. Tasmania is the first in Australia to get access to the $1.5 billion upgrade. It's doubling our state's capacity for transmission, helping deliver services like NBN. We are already hearing many very smart businesses coming to our state because of this sort of infrastructure. It's cheaper for me to put a bit through this technology than it was the older technology. And the technology we put in place today is 40% more efficient in power than it was previously. For the technology industry, it's a welcomed investment, heralding reduced costs for consumers as the major telcos compete for customers. What we hope that equates to, though, is a reduction within costs uh, so that internet is more affordable. But as opportunities arise, there's fears Tasmania will be limited in taking advantage. Again, our state is lagging behind the rest of the country on a new digital literacy report. The other states are absolutely, they've grown quicker. So they are investing within digital literacy, within education, and they are looking for ways to try to educate their population. Young people should be considering developing skills and knowledge more broadly in ICT fields. The opportunities in there are not only increasing at the moment, but we're looking at what the forecasts are over the next five years. Jacqueline Robson, Southern Cross News. Now a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. The Australian share market has closed higher after mining and energy companies rallied on stronger commodity prices and the banks also posted strong gains. The ASX 200 index has risen by 51.8 points. 
A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 80.14 US cents and 67.75 euro cents. Is Tasmania's best Formula One hope, having been compared to the likes of Daniel Ricciardo, but his success certainly hasn't come easy. Back home in Tasmania before travelling to Europe, I caught up with Alex Peroni today to get an insight into what life is like in the fast lane. At just 17 years old, Alex Peroni's perspective is just as impressive as his skills on the track. It does look glamorous, doesn't it, on TV, you just see the drivers, you know, grid girls, champagne, all the stuff. But yeah, I think behind the scenes is quite the opposite. I think it's, you know, a daily grind. One Peroni has gotten to know all too well, having spent the last five months in Europe competing in the Formula Renault series. It's gone really, really kind of professional quickly, you know, training every day, I've got to watch my diet. And despite common misconception, the road to realising his Formula One dream has been tough. Well, most people think that when you reach the level that Alex is at, that you're actually being paid to drive. Nothing could be further from the truth. You actually have to raise the money to pay for the team. After taking out last year's Monoplace Challenge title, Peroni went on to become the first Aussie since Daniel Ricciardo to win a round of the Formula Renault Euro Cup Series at France's Po Circuit in May. That, that was incredible. I think that, that weekend was just one of those weekends where everything went right. You know, we out of the box we were quick in the first practice session, we were first on the track. I've never been to. But the season has also seen its share of lows. A recent run of bad luck in Austria sees him currently sitting eighth overall in the series. Once you're out there, it's just all you by yourself, and you know, it's a lot of pressure. How do you handle it? I think just knowing that you've got it in the bag, like you've done enough work. Yeah. Just, yeah, confidence. I think as soon as you have some bad weekends and you lose your confidence, yeah. you know, it shows. Having to keep a cool head at speeds of 250 kilometres an hour and competing against the world's best up-and-comers, Peroni now finds himself amidst the steepest learning curve of his life. I think the first couple of laps, like, it's so close and you almost forget to breathe at some points. Like, you just have to be totally concentrated all the time. And having already drawn comparisons to his mentor, Daniel Ricciardo, the pressure is at times testing. Oh, jeez. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but he says he wouldn't want it any other way. You just love going fast, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> it's the only thing I'm really decent at, so. He leaves for France in three weeks to compete in round eight of the 10-round series. Not bad, is it? Absolute legend. <laughs> Cheers. Good evening. A mostly sunny day over most of the state with some showers in the east. Hobart saw 12, Launceston 13 after a low of minus 2, Burnie and Devonport 13. The state's maximum was 14 at King Island, Smithton, Eddiston and Swan Island. Lowhead, Wynyard, St Helens and Friendly Beaches reached 13. Lyawini, famous for the state's lowest temps, recording a minus 7 overnight. The satellite showing a cloud band in the Tasman with another band of cloud over southern Western Australia. Mid-level cloud over the centre of South Australia with patchy low cloud over East Queensland and Tasmania. Up close, low level convective cloud is spreading around the south and east of the state. And the synoptic showing a deep low in the Tasman tomorrow, extending a cold front to New Zealand. A low pressure system over Western South Australia with a high sitting right over Tasmania. Variable winds tomorrow up to 15 knots, tending east to northeasterly in the evening, increasing to 20 knots about the north West. We can expect west to southwesterly swells tomorrow, reaching around three metres. Tomorrow, Hobart will see plenty of sunshine with 13, a frosty start to Jeeveston, 12, and Bothwell, 11, after a low of minus five. Launceston, another morning of frost with 13. Devonport, mostly sunny, 13. Cressy, 12, after another minus five overnight. Burnie, mostly sunny, 12. Strawn and Curry, mostly fine with 13. And on the east coast, St Helens and Swansea, partly cloudy, 13, Orford partly cloudy and 12. The three day forecast Thursday a cold start with widespread frost and possible fog but mostly fine with possible showers around the east and far north. Friday rain expected in the north and possible showers about the east and west coast towards the evening. And Saturday, rain across the north and west with showers developing elsewhere during the morning. Around the country tomorrow, Perth 17, Adelaide 14, Melbourne fog and 15, Cairns possible showers with 27. 
and currently seven in Hobart, mostly clear. Launceston, seven and clear. Devonport, eight and clear. Going to be another frosty start in most of our centres tomorrow, Joe. Certainly looks that way, doesn't it? Thanks so much for that, Candice. That's all from the team for now. Have a great evening, Rug Up. Stay warm. I'll see you a bit later with updates. Bye-bye.